restorative justice program in Jamaica. Tell us a little about Andrew Lindsay, though. Well, um, once again, Sergeant Green, thank you for having me on. Um, I heard you in your introduction saying that it has been a long time, and indeed it has been a couple of years since we first met and right. we have been trying to make this happen. Right. So I am really glad also that finally it's happening today. Yes. So as you said, I am the coordinator for restorative justice in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually been with the Ministry of Justice for around two years. Mm -hmm. um, and I started as a manager, actually, in Portland, which is where I met you. Right. Um, and then I moved on to managing the center in St. Mary. Mm -hmm. And finally, I've been uh, promoted to this position. Mm -hmm. So we thank God. And me personally, I am a Jamaican. I have an accent. Which that was the other question. You're reading my mind, man. Because that was the <laughs> other question. Are you a Jamaican? <laughs> of course, people always are. So I'm trying to speak very slow to make sure I control the accent. <laughs> um, I am Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica, and my father took me to England when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and I lived in England for 30 years. Wow. Um, yes, so a very long time, so very thick accent. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to be honest, Sergeant Green, I've always been Jamaican at my core, though. Mm -hmm. um, my mother lived here. We're from St. Catherine, and I always came back on holiday. And I always said, when I grow up um, and I'm an adult, I have my education, I really want to come back to Jamaica and try to make a difference in the country, mm -hmm. try to impact my fellow men and um, to find myself in this position as the coordinator for such a transformative program I really feel blessed I'm really happy that I can impact and myself and my team can impact so many Jamaicans across the nation and indeed you have been doing so all right um for the persons out there that don't know what it is explain the restorative justice to our listeners Okay, so restorative justice is really a process where all the parties that are involved in a conflict or an offence, they come together, they sit down, and they really try to deal with the situation, what has taken place, how they have been affected, and how they can move forward together in a way that doesn't cause more conflict. So it's a different way of thinking about crime and conflict, not the usual kind of retributive way of thinking about conflict. You know, when something happens, people tend to be, human beings generally, tend to be very quick to act. Mm -hmm. And restorative justice is really about interrupting that thought and saying, okay, there has been some harm here. Let's look at what's happened and how we can move forward together in a more community-focused way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and trust me, it, you know, when we, when we speak more, we'll explain to the public how it, it has really been a successful way to go. Yes. Yes. I know you've recently celebrated Restorative Justice, uh, Restorative Justice Week 2020. Tell us about those celebrations. I know it was a big thing for, for you all. Yes, it was, and thank you for asking that. So Restorative Justice Week 2020 was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The theme was supporting peace and unity in our community, mm -hmm. which is really at the heart of what we do. So it's a week of activities. We always begin on a Sunday or a Saturday with a Thanksgiving service. This year it was a Sunday, mm -hmm. and we had that in the Church of the Open Bible down there on Boulevard in Kingston. Mm -hmm. And that was myself and the minister speaking. You know, the pastors were really involved. The congregation was really involved in the service. That was about raising the awareness yes. of the program and letting persons know the week has started. And these are some of the things which we have lined up for you this week. Um, on Monday, all the centers, we have 60, well, we actually have 17, but 16 active oh. centers across Jamaica. Okay. And every single one of those centers on Monday 
the third, was really doing some form of sensitization or activity to mark Restorative Justice Week. That was in the schools, colleges, on the corners, in the street, really, again, engaging communities and letting them know about the program. And this is going to be an annual event? It is an annual event. We do it every year. This year, it was the 11th Mm -hmm. annual Restorative Justice Conference. So we've been around for a while. I heard you say at the beginning, it's a new program. It's not new. It's been around since 2011. Okay. But we're really ramping up the effort now to let persons know that we're there because we found that we need more raising awareness. People in the public don't know about the program. And we're making sure that this year Mm -hmm. we are raising the bar and we're letting the communities know Mm -hmm. that we are here to serve the people and help to bring healing to the communities. I guess we we, we thought of it as being new because the public awareness is now um, coming out more. And um, indeed, it has been around for a while, but, you know, we weren't aware of, of the magnitude of it. I know it is in Jamaica, you say, 17 um, branches. Are there other countries, though, that embrace um, restorative justice system? In their yes, system? well, restorative justice is very popular, um, especially across Europe. Um, as I alluded to earlier, I grew up in London. Um, I was a child protection social worker, and we use that extensively. Circles is extensively used across social services to really bring families together, Mm -hmm. and to bring some calm to situations in a social service arena. Mm -hmm. Also, in Australia, it is a big deal. And in Canada, Canada has really done some partnership working with us. And they're also, um, the government of Canada also sponsor the program. They have been very supportive. Mm -hmm. And we train with people called the IIRP, Mm -hmm. who are the International Institute of Restorative Practices. And they really are the leaders, one of the leaders in the world in this practice. And we're patterning that. So we're really doing well in making sure that we really are looking to some of the greatest to lead in the example of what restorative justice and restorative practices should be like, the right way to do it. Um, So, yes, there are many places doing it. It's also a big thing in Norway as well. So right across, really, Europe, Um, North America, Australia, it is being utilized. Okay. How successful is the restorative justice system, though? Yes, great question. I'm glad you asked it. Let me me give you some figures just so that your listeners Mm -hmm. can really get an idea of how effective it has been. Mm. So in from the year 2019, from January to December, we have conducted 7,000 252 sensitizations. Mm -hmm. That is where we go out and speak to people in the church, in the schools, at the places of work. Um, We had targets. Our target was 5,500 beneficiaries, but we've actually sensitized 7,252 beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when it comes to conferences, for the year 2019, we, tar- we had a target of 1,500 conferences. But mm-hmm. so far for the year, we measured 1,704 conferences. Wow. So can you imagine that 1,704 conflict situations that we have addressed? Mm-hmm. Um, the part- and just to give you an even more idea to hone in on that, those conferences consisted of 10,523 participants. Are you serious? Could you imagine? Oh. Yes, I'm very serious. Yes. Um, so so you, you see, even though I hear when you say that our public awareness has not been the strongest, mm-hmm. and we hear that and we're addressing that, however, the program is really being utilised and people are really getting benefit from this program. You know, people come back and they tell us how effective it's been, how thankful they are, and how much difference it's really made. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. It, it, it's doing a big thing, even though saying that, we must also acknowledge that it doesn't work in all cases. You know, there's no one answer 
for addressing crime and conflict. We right. know that. Um, and this doesn't work in all cases. Some cases we refer back to the court. Right. Some cases we refer back to the original referrer. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, you know, to, to really affect the lives of 10,000, 523 that's donations. a lot i think that's brilliant that that's that's extre ex extremely it's doing very well um yes. and and so my next question because i'm in the court system and i and i noticed that it is now being utilized and, um, and and has been very very effective in my estimation yes. what impact do you think it is having on our justice system you being the coordinator um, well, I think, and I know from, again, the statistics that it's having a great impact on the justice system. Mm -hmm. Firstly, let's look at the courts you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we had 1,631 cases that ended in an agreement from the court. Whoa. And what that means in real life, Sergeant Green, is that's 1,631 cases that would have been in the system, still waiting probably to be heard and to come to a conclusion. But restorative justice allows to have that real swift, we bring justice to the people almost. Right. Um, so it's, again, it's impactful, over 1,500 cases out of the court system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know from working in the courts that our system is really backed up in the court. Exactly. And, 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 and let me just explain to the persons out there um, in layman term what happened when the restorative justice system, how it works in court, is that two parties, um, you might be in a, a community, you might be family members, you might be neighbors, and you have a dispute of some sort, whether it is unlawful wounding, um, assault, OBM, whatever it is. But what the court doesn't want is to just necessarily say guilty or not guilty and that then the, 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 the whatever caused the problem initially is still there to continue and so where I see where the restorative justice system comes in and has been very effective is to find out what is the underlying problem behind these disputes and 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 and, and have what you mean have a, have a, a, a number of sessions sometimes to come to an amicable solution for these per persons. So I think, honestly, as you, have, as you have said, rightfully so, it has been very effective in our justice system. Yes, indeed, and that was a very good explanation because, you know, restorative justice is more than just going to court, having a case referred, getting found guilty or not guilty. It's not about that. It's looking deeper into the harm that has been caused and addressing that because, you know, when we address the causes of what happened, the causes of the conflict, mm -hmm. only then can we really seek to restore the peace and restore the harmony. Sometimes if you go to court and you're found guilty or not guilty, you're still left with that hurt. Mm -hmm. Nothing has really been addressed. Yes. Apart from, you know, finding the person guilty, you might get some money, and that's the end of the story. But with restorative justice, you get the opportunity Mm -hmm. to really sit down with the person that you are in conflict with mm -hmm. and get to hear their side of the story and you get to tell your side of the story. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it, that persons can really get to talk. You know, sometimes when I was a practitioner, I still try to ensure that I stay within practice. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I would sit down and some persons, they would talk for an hour and they would say, you know, no one has ever listened to yes. me before. Yes. No one has ever heard my story. Mm -hmm. And they appreciate that process of restorative justice, being able to say how they were affected. You know, there's a, there's a real healing when you've been hurt and someone says, how did that make you feel? Yes. And you are able to describe how you felt. Mm -hmm. that's, there's, there's power in that. It is. You know, that really brings about healing. And as I said, that's one of the beautiful things about restorative justice as persons get that opportunity mm -hmm. to really express how they feel, how they were affected, how they were hurt. And what? And the important question, what do you think needs to be done to make things right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, again, sometimes in our traditional system, or more wild in our traditional system, we don't ask persons that. The judge hasn't got the time, really, right. to sit, you know, to sit down and hear your issues and you know, find out what you think is best. They, they go in, they've got the guideline, and they have to adhere by that guideline. Right. 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 You, you see, right. you see, I, I want persons that is listening to understand that when you go to court. And, um, and you decide to go to the, rest, the restorative justice system, um, the matter doesn't end there. If when you go to the system, you all can't come to an amicable solution, it is the court that decides then, okay, we'll go to trial. But it's always best to go and talk it over with the restorative justice. Because a lot of things, as you have rightfully said, can be fleshed out there that cannot be fleshed out in court. The court, as you have said, they have guidelines. And so you, they have to operate by the law. And so I might want to say, you know, what did happen one time is that the person did lick my sister with a pot. And because she licked my sister with a pot, my cousin did a come and see it. And, and you realize that this thing goes way back, which a court can't facilitate. Right. So, so it's always good. And I, I really and truly think it was very good when the restorative system restorative justice system came in because as you have said i've seen a lot of matters come to an end amicably because of it exactly that's right i I want to ask a question though before i go on a short break because i know this is a question that persons is asking what is the cost of restorative justice um to jamaica you know this is i'm very glad you asked that question that question is i think a very important question Mm -hmm. and can either make or break someone coming to restorative justice right the cost to come to restorative justice and have a session with trained professionals is absolutely nothing it's zero it's free you mean free of course free not charge It's free. It's a, Sorry. It's an intervention from the Ministry of Justice that costs participants nothing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I know that you do the matters um, through the court, but do, is there any other way that you, you, you facilitate persons? Um, can I just walk off the street and come and say, listen, you know, my family members are having a problem and I think this is going to, somebody's going to get in, themselves in trouble. How can I get you to be a part of us? Yes, again, another important question. Anyone can recommend or self-refer. Um, we, have, we accept community referrals. Mm-hmm. Say, for example, it was you or your sister. You can walk into any centre, explain your situation, and we will facilitate a circle. Um, if the other one thing about restorative justice is that all participants must be willing to participate yes. in the intervention. So if you if, if you go to court and you say not guilty, the judge will not refer you to restorative justice. Exactly. You the judge have... will explain to you mm-hmm. the judge will explain to you what restorative justice is mm-hmm. and will, you know, advise you that this is this process can work for you and they will tell you it's voluntary. So if it's something that you would like to do, yes, it is, okay, referral made. Because, I mean, the very important thing about it being a voluntary process is that this is a confidential process. It's an open process Mm -hmm. where you come and you speak about certain things. If you're saying not guilty, that, that creates a friction sometimes or more while because then there is no chance for the healing. If you've done something which you're saying you have not done, then the victim is in front of you knowing that you've done it. That would just cause more friction in a situation. Definitely. Miss Lindsay, yes? I, I, I'm going to ask you to hold your point right there. Do not forget what you're going to say because we're going to pick up back when we, when we come off the break right where you are. But we're going no to be problem. taking a very short break. We're asking just a whole line until we take care of a few business. All right? Thank you. Thank All you. right. My listeners, we have been speaking to Miss Andrine Lindsay, the coordinator of the Restorative Justice Sys- Program in Jamaica. We're going to be taking a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with you after these messages. I'm tired of this pop down jalap, you know, you know. Watch there. We all run out of gas now. What, babes? I think the quarter town could have carried from Kingston come up with Antonio. 
Uh, uh, boss man, man, which part run is the nearest gas station there? Yeah man, right at the road man. Bram's Texaco right at the side there. So boss, we can get one cup of coffee, one hot dog, anything for each round here? Lady, you know what I'm saying? Bram's Texaco, everything up there. Bram's Texaco, service station and convenience store. Located at Arbor Street, Port Antonio, Long Bay, Portland, 24 Queen Street, Morant Bay, Gale, St. Mary. Proud sponsor of In the Know of the Law. For complete auto repairs and services, come to Acon Auto Technology, located at 33 Bumble Crescent, Port Antonio, Jamaica. We offer specialist services in wheel alignment and wheel balancing, brake drum and disc rotary servicing, state-of-the-art ultrasonic cleaning and testing of your fuel injectors. We also stock an assorted range of auto service parts, tires and motorcraft batteries. If we don't have it, we will source it for you. Call us at 876-715-5205 or email Acon Acon Auto Tech 16 at gmail.com. Acon Auto Technology, beyond the typical auto mechanic shop. Hardcore Twang Master Swag, the ultimate party animal broke out drink. Made from real Jamaican rum and fruit juice. Flavors available, June plum, sorrel, fruit punch, orange, and pineapple. Swag, like a party animal, best consume over ice, must be 18 years and older to drink. Drink responsibly. Contact us today at 876-348-6183 for more information. At Nutswood Express, everything matters. It matters that our customer transportation officers are trained for 12 weeks before captaining their first passenger trip. It matters that your precious cargo parts on time and arrive safely. It matters that you enjoy the comforts and convenience of home. Because at the Nutswood, we move what matters. Task Property Appraisals Company Limited is a licensed valuation entity that is committed to providing quality service to clients across Jamaica. We have over 10 years industry experience. Our track record of providing speedy service is complemented by affordable prices. We also work with commissioned land surveyors to meet your surveying needs and provide referrals to law firms. We're licensed as a real estate agent and offer real estate consultation. We also provide valuations for insurance purposes. We cater to residential and commercial customers as well as those in the agricultural and industrial sector. For more information, contact us at shop 28 2 to 4 Fort George Street, Port Antonio. Family Building. Call us at 876-410-9020 or 876-862-0509. Welcome back to the second half of In the Know of the Law on Styles FM. I am your host, Sergeant Delrose Green, and I have been speaking with Miss Andrine Lindsay, the coordinator of the Restorative Justice Program in Jamaica, I met this beautiful lady some time ago when she was in Portland office, but she has now been elevated and she's uh, the coordinator for the justice in Jamaica. Miss Lindsay, are you still there? Okay, right, yes, definitely. Right, you were saying about um, the, 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 the persons in your office being confidential and how they deal with persons when they get there. Yes. Right. Okay, so what I was saying is that the process is a voluntary process, mm -hmm. and I was merely saying that, the, just explaining really the importance of it um, being voluntary because we want persons to be able to admit guilt, right. to say that, you know, yes, I've done this thing and I want to make it right, I want to make amends, and, you know, I think this is it's just such a great time, I know... As, you know, we have said, we've known each other for some time and, you know, we met when I'd done a sensitization at the police station in Port Antonio, but I think this is the right time because with everything even going on in the schools mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, restorative justice is needed in Jamaica and we want the whole country to know about it. Our minister, Minister Chuck, he's very passionate mm -hmm. about this program and everywhere he goes, he speaks about it. You know, I'm hoping that one day we'll be able to get him to have even a telephone interview on your show as well so you can really speak to him and he can speak to your listeners mm -hmm. about the program because our country needs it. Definitely. Well, you know, the program is open, as I, I told you, and, you know, you, you can make it possible. And we are here and we are ready to assist in any day that you are ready. Um, you. So you can just make it happen and we are, we are here to facilitate 
Good. We will make it happen. Um, yeah. Describe for me a typical day at the Restorative Justice um, Centre. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's an interesting question, Sergeant <laughs> Green, because I can tell you there is no such thing as a typical day <laughs> at any of our centres. But, I mean, on a given day, and we do many things, you know, we go, we, we have a very close, uh, relationship with the courts, so with the police, with communities and schools particularly. Um, so on a given day, let me tell you about a conference day or leading up to a conference, what happens? So we have a referral. A referral is received through whichever means. Mm -hmm. It could be the police, a school, a self-referral or the court. Yes. The first thing that we will do upon receiving that referral is we will have a look, have a triaged, See that yes is something that we can deal with we will then call the participants so the victim and the offender mm -hmm. and just really kind of what we're doing now having a conversation about what is restorative justice and the, telling them about the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they agree to proceed both of them we also ask them to invite a community supporter and that is someone of their choice. And really, that's about emotional support. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, you know, what we find is that when people come and they're speaking about intimate things, confidential things, hurtful things, mm -hmm. some things that they have not spoken about ever, mm -hmm. when they are engaged in that kind of conversation and dialogue, they get very upset. And mm -hmm. we see a lot of tears. People cry, they cry, they bawl, they moan. Mm -hmm. So they have a supporter with them. And we really pre-interview everybody mm -hmm. to ensure, number one, that they understand the process. Mm -hmm. But also, number two, to ensure that they're at the right space right. to be able to have that dialogue. Because sometimes you have persons who have been through a conflict situation and for some reason or the other, they're not really at the point where they're ready to sit down and go back into the story. Mm -mm. So we are kind of having a risk assessment to ensure that they are on, at the right place to engage in the dialogue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. With, with domestic that, violence? Sorry. With, go ahead, sorry. Yes, so once, once we ascertain that, yes, everybody is ready and we proceed to now the day of the conference. The day of the conference, the participants are usually the victim and a supporter, mm -hmm. the offender and a supporter, mm -hmm. and a facilitator and a co-facilitator. Mm -hmm. And that's us at the Ministry of Justice, um, or individuals in the community who have been trained as restorative justice facilitators. And, you know, our role is a real neutral role. We're there, as the title says, to facilitate the process. Mm -hmm. We are not there to give you the answers. We are not there to write the agreement for you or to tell you the term of any agreement. Mm -hmm. What we're there to do is to facilitate that conversation, mm -hmm. to ask those questions and allow persons to open up and speak about what's transpired. Mm -hmm. So after that, as we go along, the first person speaks, talks about what happened and how it has affected them. The victim speaks, the offender speaks, the community supporters speak. Mm -hmm. And then once everyone has spoken, it's quite a process-driven situation where once you're speaking, everyone else is listening. Mm -hmm. It's not I'm going to interrupt your story because I have something to say. It's about exercising patience and showing that respect Mm -hmm. care and dignity, the principles of restorative justice. And, and showing uh, persons that you respect what they have to say. Yep. Um, with the domestic violence on the rise, um, Miss Lindsay, do you have a lot of persons coming in to speak to you with their spouse, um, with their husbands, with their wives? Do you have a lot of those coming in to you? Yes, I must say, when I was in Portland, I did not have as many, but I think, as you said, with domestic violence on the rise, mm -hmm. when I was placed in St. Mary, we had a high number of cases that involved aspects of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. um, that could be emotional, psychological, and physical also. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what we always ensured that we do, which is important, we do facilitate 
the conversation. But we recognize that that's not where it ends for domestic abuse situations. No. So we always ensured they were also referred to counseling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we, we don't, you know, in the situation of restorative justice, mm-hmm. we recognize that domestic abuse is an ongoing activity most of the time. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to say, have this conference and that's going to help, that, that's going to heal everything. Mm-hmm. You know, but what we do is we begin, we open the conversation, we open that dialogue, facilitate that conversation. And sometimes that can really be the catalyst for a change. Yes. You I, know, but they, we, we always, always refer on and we always advise they must seek further, further help, deeper help um, because with those situations it is at times psychological and needs further intervention and and so that leads me up to my other question that I was asking how can you know how do you think how can restorative justice change the way that Jamaicans view the justice system again I think that's an important question and I, I think the first way that they can view that they can change their view of it is that this form of justice is a community-based form of justice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's coming from the Ministry of Justice. And what it's saying is that we recognize that the answer isn't always going to a court and saying guilty or not guilty and someone going to prison as a result. Mm-hmm. It's saying that things, you know, things are changing. We want to hear what, we have to, what people have to say. And we want to integrate persons into communities. We don't want to talk about throwing people into prison and that's the answer. You know, it's not always about that form of punishment. So what our communities can really learn from that is that they have a justice system that is listening, that is open to listening and facilitating conversations in a different way than what they are used to. It's about a different way of thinking about crime and conflict because, you know, it's important that we teach as well. Mm -hmm. We teach our young people, we teach our peers in society that the answer can't always be in retributive punishment. Mm -hmm. That can't always be the way. We have to look at things more holistically. And what we're really trying to facilitate in Jamaica is to talk. Let's talk about this. Let's sit down as man and woman, as brethren, as sisters, and see how we can sort this thing out. Let's yes. talk. Yes. You know, let's not pick up the cutlass. Let's not chop each other. Let's not, you know, fist fight in the street. Let's look at things differently and respect each other. And I, I say that, and I know it's not easy. <laughs> so although I say it, I know it's not an easy thing to achieve because, as I said, we're all human beings and we all have that those reactive kind of instincts. Um, But, you know, bit by bit, we need to build up that we need to think before we act. And and this will impact the the whole country. But um, I I saw a couple of videos. I couldn't even watch them from my it on my phone and see that's what it is I delete. Um, Quite a few videos I've seen going around where students are in brawls and fights. Yes. And and so, you know, if we could get from that stage, from, you know, from schools to understand, you know, how to to, to resolve our conflicts without getting physical, then it would actually um, lessen the the, the burden of the courts, the police, and, and subsequently the restorative justice system. Yes, definitely. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, that um, we do do the training, the restorative practices training with school administrators, and we want to roll out more of those Mm -hmm. over the coming year because the children are the future. It is. The children are the future. So we need to ensure that what we're teaching in the schools and what we're teaching our young people is a more restorative way of thinking. It's not about fighting. It's not about if someone does you wrong, then you go and get a knife, or you go and get your big brother, or your big sister, or your dad because he's big and tough. It's about, let's sit down. You hurt me. When you've done this to me, it made me feel this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, sometimes we do things as human beings, and we don't realize the impact it really has on other people. Mm-hmm. We don't realize how much hurt we have caused. And maybe when we start to talk about it and we hear and realize 
how much hurt we've really caused, then we'll begin to change our way of behaving as well. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, I, you know, one of the things that I'm happy that it was, it was born out this evening is that, you know, restorative justice system is not just for crimes that have been reported to the police. And right. I'm happy that that is born out today. Yes, exactly. I think, of course, restorative justice in the words, in the title, it speaks to justice. But it's, it's not just about crimes, as you have said, mm-hmm. just reported. It could be just a conflict with your mama. Some persons have come to the senses and said, you know, my, my mom and I, we live together at home. We're not getting along. She doesn't understand me. I remember one situation in St. Mary and the Highgate Police actually <coughs> referred a case where there was a young girl. She was 13 mm-hmm. and she was not getting along with her mum. And I mean, it wasn't about social services intervention. It wasn't about having that, but it was about having that conversation. And I went to see them and in the end facilitated a conference and we had an agreement, just some things about the time she went to bed and washing the dishes and some chores. And, you know, that was about a year and a half ago, and I still check up on them. And they're doing brilliantly. Yes, they do slip up. She does. That's acceptable. But they said that having that sit down together and hearing from one another, the mum was crying, the daughter was crying, it was very emotional. And they were just saying, the mum's always saying that it was so good being able to hear her daughter's perspective in an environment where there was no pressure. It was just they can just talk about things and find a way to move things on in an amicable way that the mother, the mother didn't think she had to beat the daughter, the daughter didn't think she couldn't speak to her mum. So restorative justice is really facilitating all different kinds of conversation. And that is why, <laughs> that is why I think the residents should open up themselves to, 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 to the idea of restorative justice because it will prevent a lot of things. Yes, definitely. And, I mean, we're talking, uh, you're based, I know, in Portland, and we do have a centre, a parish justice centre in Portland. It's in Buff Bay. Uh, Mr. Dawar Williams is the manager for the parish of Portland, and I'll give you the telephone number as well. Um, it's based in the courthouse upstairs. I just want people listening to tell a friend and for themselves to hear what we're talking about and really, as you said, open themselves to this form of intervention. Because, you know, if we don't open up our minds to a different way of thinking and behaving, our little country is going to suffer. Yes, sir. And we're, we're too small to continue perpetuating violence, acts of violence, acts of conflicts all the time. The country is such a small small country mm-hmm. and we're killing off one another every day we're in argument with this one we're in dispute and conflict and all all manner of things with our neighbors what we need to do is to have those conversations and try to live more peacefully yes tea time son after me as they say mm-hmm. but it's what you do when tea and tongue meet. I know that, um, that. I know that, like the police, the restorative justice, it can be considered an on the job, on the job training. As every day that you go in office, you have different situations to deal with that will actually teach you how to, you know, deal with another situation that will come that way. But what is the initial training that your officers go through? What's the process to become um, a restorative justice officer? Okay, so good question again. So we have um, an application form which is online at www.moj.gov.jm. Halfway down the page to the right, you will see the online facilitators form. Mm -hmm. Um, So there is a training which we are actually rewriting before it was online but we want to make it more interactive. Mm -hmm. So there will be an interactive training element. Um, And that should be complete within around three months. Mm -hmm. And within that, everyone that signs up to be a facilitator will need to complete something we call Mm three-two-one. And that is ensuring that they observe three conferences. Mm -hmm. After the observations, that they are a co-facilitator on two conferences. Mm -hmm. And after that, that they are a lead facilitator on one conference, oh. three, two, one. At that 
stage, so application, training, and practicum. After that stage, then, and only then, are they a facilitator, are they trained facilitator? We also have ongoing training, though. We don't just train you and say, that is the end of it. No. What we do is that we also facilitate further refreshes training so that you're always on top of your game, mm -hmm. and you're always, you know, ahead of what may be coming next. I, I, I it was, I've, I've learned, I've, I've listened to you and I've learned so much. And, you know, before I ask you to close your arguments, I want to encourage persons. One of the things, Miss Lindsay, that when your restorative justice um, is successful in a matter in court, it actually eliminates one from having a criminal record. Because if one goes through the process of going through a trial and being found guilty, chances are that that person, criminal, um, the records, their, 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 their conviction will be recorded. And even if the judge says that you're admonished and discharged, which is a conviction, but in other words, you are guilty, but I pardon you, that is still recorded on your records. And so I would want to encourage persons from where I sit to take up the offer of going through the restorative justice system, especially if you have a matter in court. In other words, if you know that you're wrong, admit to your wrong and say, exactly. listen, I want to go through the system to let us talk about my wrongs, where they are going to apologize, where they are going to compensate. And what I've noticed, Miss Lindsay, is that when the restorative justice teams deal with a situation, the judge doesn't necessarily ask for you to come and ball by ball give her the results in court. What she does or he does is to get a report from you to say, listen, this situation has been settled amicably. And so the parties, and so the matter is actually disposed of based upon your interaction with the persons. Yes, exactly. And um, a few points here. The first point that you have made is 100% correct. When you go through the restorative justice process, you do not receive a criminal record. That is right. So, and so though you pleaded guilty, um, you are addressing the harm that you have caused. And by entering into an agreement at the Justice Centre, which is a legally binding document, then you do not get a criminal record. So that is, that, and I mean, that is something that people really need to recognise because if you want to go anywhere, if you want to travel, go a foreign, as you say, in Jamaica, mm -hmm then you need to do a police check. You know, even these days, if you're an office attendant, mm -hmm. if you are um, going into the market, anything you do these days, need a clear you know, you need to get a police record. Mm -hmm. So not having one is very, very important. If you want to become a JP in the future, it could be 20 years from now, mm -hmm. these things are on your police record. So people really need to remain mindful that um, of that and just take up restorative justice because um, that is something that's very important. If you think about a young person, for example, you know, they make a mistake, mm -hmm. they go to court, and then they have a criminal record for how many years to come. Well, through restorative justice, if you could admit that, you know, I've done this wrong and I'm addressing it, then you can go around free in the knowledge that you don't have a police record. Ms. Ms. So that's very important. That's yes. very important. Miss Lindsay, I, I, we have come to the end, but I, I want to ask you, I'm going to give you two minutes to tell persons why they should be a part of the restorative justice system in, in Jamaica and, um, and tell us, you know, actually... I know that you have, we met in Portland, and, and I actually, I'm very impressed. I want to commend you. You actually came and was selling the idea to the police when I, I peeked in and listened, and I was actually hooked to the conversation because it was very, very interesting. And um, I've since bought into the idea, and I've seen it work in court. I know it is something that is not going anywhere. I know the minister is very passionate about it. And yeah. so I want you to take the next two minutes and to explain to persons why they should be a part of this system. Okay, well, thank you. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity, Sergeant Green. It has been great, number one. Um, number two, I just want to really 
call out to persons to say that if you're involved in a conflict, this is the way to go. Um, restorative justice is a process where you can sit down with the person you have done wrong or the person who has wronged you and face up to what's taken place and look at how you can make things better. Remember, Jamaica is small. We, don't, we want to try to reduce crime and violence in our country. We want to protect the beautiful paradise that we live in and all the citizens. We want to respect each other, and restorative justice is the beginning of that process. And for persons also who are interested and who are caught up in these conflicts, please remember we have the Parish Justice Centre at number 2 Russell Avenue, Buff Bay, upstairs the courthouse. The telephone number there is 876-941-0726. And for persons who are listening from the wider Jamaica, please remember our central office number is 876-908-5527. That will put you through to our Kingston office, and we can redirect you from there. So please remember... Let's promote peace in our communities. Let's support the initiative and let us utilize this brilliant intervention from the Ministry of Justice, which is available to all of you for absolutely nothing, for free. So let's move forward in a positive way in our communities and let's utilize this intervention that has been given to us. Thank you. I, I want to thank you so much for taking time out to come on today to, uh, to speak to us. And I want to give you an open invitation that just give me a call when you're ready to come on back so we can speak some more about this very important movement by the Ministry of Justice. I certainly will, Sergeant Green. And thank you again for the opportunity. Good evening to you and good evening to all of your listeners. Good evening and thank you very much, Miss Lindsay. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. We have been speaking to Ms. Andrine Lindsay, Ministry of Justice, Balancing Rights and Responsibilities, the new face of justice. And, you know, I have wanted to speak to this lady for some time because I've seen it worked in our courts. And I know it's something that, it, you know, it really can go places. And so that is Ms. Andrine Lindsay, coordinator of the Restorative Justice Program in Jamaica. And for Portlanders, we have the Restorative Justice Office right door, down there in Buffby at the courthouse on the upstairs. Nice, beautiful, spacious office. And um, have, as you have heard her said, you don't have to be a, 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 you don't have to have a matter in court to utilize the services of the Restorative Justice. You can walk in. You and a family member can have a long standing or, you know, argument or things that you realize is going to escalate. You can walk in, you can ask them to intervene, and they will. And if you have a matter in court and you know that you're guilty, you can plead guilty. Say to the judge, I want to go to the restorative justice. As a matter of fact, you will be asked. It's a part of the process now. They'll ask you, would you like to go to restorative justice? And it's not the end of the matter there. When you go to the restorative justice classes, if you feel that the matter cannot be resolved there, it, 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 that, that's not the end of it because the matter have to come back to court for the judge to properly dispose of the matter. So when you're there, you can say, well, Your Honor, I want the matter to try. Or, yes, we are satisfied. And so that's the end of that. One of the things that it does is that it prevents you from having a criminal record. Because if you say you're guilty and you're willing to go to restorative justice, then the court gives you the chance to redeem yourself through the process, through this counseling process and amicable solutions with the other person. And so it's always it's always recommended that you go to the restorative justice nobody is supporting you to plead not guilty if you're not guilty then that's a whole different ball game you go through your trial and you do your thing all right so i want to thank everyone for listening for the persons who have whatsapp i didn't want to break but kevoy chambers say good evening dg thank you kevoy sadie from your castle say good evening dg and cassidy thank you very much and also, I'm um, Dwayne in Tennessee. Hi, Dwayne up there in Tennessee. Thank you very much. Minister Brian, say good afternoon and love you. I love you too, Minister Brian, and thanks for always being a part of in the know of the law. Coming this Wednesday, I hope to continue with Mr. Merrick. That's the immigration lawyer. 
please have your questions line up um, that, you know, he can explain certain things to you. That's the expert. He won't be here forever. I have him for a few programs, as he has promised. And so anything that you want to know about your passport, visa, and, and you know, green card or whatever, feel free to send in the questions next um, Wednesday coming that he will facilitate you free of cost. All right? And so I want to tell you thanks. Quite a lot of things have been happening. We heard about the fire. Um, one person's have met their demise. And so we really are in sympathy with the, uh, the, the persons, the family members and the staff that are down there. It, it's so sad. And one of the things before I leave, I want to say, you know, I'm at the end of the program, but I want to encourage us to be more, you know, more helpful. I mean, I stand and I, I watched and I saw persons videoing, taking pictures while, 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 while this man walked naked because he was burnt. And I don't see anybody rushing for a car. I don't see anybody trying to make us put him in a vehicle. You know, when did we reach this stage that everybody wants to be the first to flim it, to send out instead of giving a helping hand? People, we have to do better. We must do better because Jamaica is our loving people. And when one is in crisis, instead of we pull our phones to hurry up and video and take picture, let us help more than a man. Please, I'm begging you, I'm asking you, please, let us be more human to each other. All right, I want to say thanks to everyone, um, especially to my sponsors, Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Braham's Texaco, of course, we have Toyos, Nail Shop Number 6, Rosemary Plaza, Mort Bay, St. Thomas, and you can get her at 876 and um, empty landscaping services up there in Francis Lewis Boulevard at New York City as 347-840-4623. Of course, we have Mr. Errol Barnes up there in Baltimore who is always supporting the program. If you want to sponsor this program or any other program on Styles FM, please remember to contact us and let us know by what medium you would do so. Or if you want to contribute something to the program, you can also do so. Thanks to uh, Cassidy, my engineer, who is always here with me. I made it through, people. Thanks to you for staying with me. Have the cold, have the flu, but I didn't cough much, all right? Take care. God bless you. And again, it's been a pleasure serving you this afternoon. God bless you. Take care. Stay safe. Love you all. We're gone. Bye-bye. I'm tired of you and this pop down jalapeno, you know, you know. Watch there, we all run out of gas now. But babes, me think the quarter town could have carried from Kingston come up with Antonio. Ah, uh, boss man, which part run us to the nearest gas station there? Yeah man, right on the road man. Brian's Texaco right on the side there. So boss, we can't get one cup of coffee, one hot dog, anything for eat around here? Lady, you know what I'm saying? Brian's Texaco, everything up there. Brian's Texaco, service station and convenience store. Located at Arbor Street, Port Antonio, Long Bay, Portland, 24 Queen Street, Morant Bay, Gale, St. Mary. Proud sponsor of In the Know of the Law. Task Property Appraisals Company Limited is a license licensed valuation entity that is committed to providing quality service to clients across Jamaica. We have over 10 years industry experience. Our track record of providing speedy service is complemented by affordable prices. We also work with commissioned land surveyors to meet your surveying needs and provide referrals to law firms. We're licensed as a real estate agent and offer real estate consultation. We also provide valuations for insurance purposes. We cater to residential and commercial customers as well as those in the agricultural and industrial sector. For more information, contact us at Shop 28, 24 Fort George Street, Port Antonio, Family Building. Call us at 876-410-9020 or 876-862-0509. Native Audio Stage and Lighting, now offering stage, lighting, and trust systems for your small and medium-sized events. Whether it's a stage show, concert, drama play, wedding, street party, or club setting, you name it, we'll bring it to life. Call us at 871-5212 or 844-6531. Native Audio Stage and Lighting, a sponsor of In the Know of the Law with Sergeant Del Rose Green and also on Rail Talk with Lady Cleo and Daddy Rude. Need a one-stop shop for all your electrical and plumbing supplies?
price? Then visit Universal Electrical and Plumbing Supplies, located at One Wharf Road, Morant Bay, St. Thomas, entrance to Presser Plaza. We offer wires, plugs, switches, breakers, PVC and CPVC pipes and fittings, LED bulbs and much more. Ask about our monthly specials, assessments and installation services. We accept all major credit and debit cards, wire transfers and cash on delivery. Call us at 876-734-0817 or WhatsApp 876-783-7649. This feeling is taking over me. I'm so excited. Oh, wow! Feeling euphoria. Tuesdays from 5 to 9 p.m. with the Master Mixer 